daily dose of hope, healthy stuff so you can keep on trucking with Hope Savaro. All right, good morning, good morning. I'm just trying to do a couple technical things here. Here we go, okay. One second, guys. Let's see if we can pull in Jacinda. Hold on a second. It's like so slow. So when I use, there we go. Let's see if we can get her in. It's like I click a button and there's like this incredibly long delay. Let's see if uh, she can hear me here and uh, ask to unmute. I just asked you to unmute yourself. Let's see if you do it. Hey, good morning. Here, good morning. <laughs> we did I'm it. Here, I'm here. We did it. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Good morning. If you don't recognize that voice, you totally should. It's Disability <laughs> Trucking coming to you live. Where are you today? Oh, good morning. Thank you for having me. I am in Florida, headed to Orlando. Literally, I'm getting on the 75 South off the 10 right this second. Oh, love it. Love it. Well, I appreciate I you coming live this morning. On. Oh, absolutely. I apologize for the delay. No, that's um, fine. I'm in my trucking bubble. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> that is totally cool. Well, this morning, I actually wanted to have you on the show for a number of reasons. One, I think you're awesome. Two, you're doing so many things in the trucking world right now. But three, I resonate with you because your perspective on life and your perspective on tough choices and uh, maybe not the perfect situation or environment or experiences is so top notch that I think so many people can learn from you, drivers or not. And I wanted to focus today's show on idea of shifting our focus away from the shit storm that sometimes is in front of us. And I wanted to kind of get your two cents. So I would love you to one, just kind of share with drivers who you are, because some people might not who you, know who you are. And two, like, why are you so dang happy all the time? <laughs> okay, well, you want me to get going? I'll get yeah, going. go for it. Well, I, in. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I can't say that enough. My name is Jacinda Duran. I go by late, Jacinda Lady Truckin' in our trucking bubble. And I'm currently, I'm an enclosed car hauler all over the country. And I'm extremely passionate about trucking. Uh, third generation lady driver, and I, I'm just happy to be here, Miss Hope, here where I am in my life at this moment, literally, this very moment in time, and I, I've lived, you know, I had life before trucking, and a lot of lives, actually, and I've been through hardships, good ships, bad ships, and I'm, I'm just grateful for where I'm at in my life. As I always say, life is good, and God is great, and I'm healthy. I'm winning. I'm winning. And I love sharing that. And I feel, you know, the backstory that I come with, people can relate to. And, you know, I hope that it encourages people that, you know, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And wow. something that I always emphasize on is, you know, I didn't just end up here, right here in this happy bubble. No, I had to work to get to where I am. And with all the tribulations and the trials, you know, that it's gotten me to where I am and I'm grateful. And I feel my gift is to share that with people and spread it, spread it, that there's always another day. And to me, happy is a choice. You have to choose to be happy and address and overcome the obstacles that come in your way, you know, expecting it, but also knowing you're gonna get past it. It's super important to me. To, to spread that, you know, in trucking or non-trucking people, it, it doesn't matter. You know, every day is a gift and embrace it. I love it. I love I it. I live it. I breathe it and I share it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so question for you though, question for you, because, because I know, I know that you have a lot of changes coming up in your life and you do not have to share them um, if you do not want to, but I wanted to um, ask you, so when, when you're out on the road, 
and mm -hmm. you're away from your family for that long of a time. Like, what are some of the things that you do to stay connected to the people that you love in life? Well, I'm thankful for, for FaceTime. That, that's a huge factor. I'm super thankful for that because you know, my two nearest or my closest people are my children. I do have two grown children. Um, I have a daughter who just turned 22 and a son who's 19. And we, we FaceTime daily, and that's, that's how I stay connected. And then my mom and my sister, you know, we chat probably every other day or so. But I'm thankful for, you know, the social media that we have because they're able to follow, you know, my journey. So they always know where I am regardless if we talk or not. Um, but, you know, I do my best to stay in touch that way. And I just want to let the people know who have smaller children or families at home with all the respect because, you know, I'm in a place where my kids are doing their own things, you know, and preparing for their adult lives. And, you know, I go when they want me to. So, um, and thankful, you know, with Plycar that all I have to do is ask to get near them or to them and they'll route me that way. So I'm present as much as I'm wanted, I guess, in, in, you know, for better words. So, you know, it's just doing, the, you know, the best we can to stay in touch in that aspect. But FaceTime is a huge one for me, either, you know, through my phone or through Messenger. And I'm thankful for that. Just like we FaceTime, you know, you get to see each other expressions, get to see yeah, what absolutely. people really are thinking by what they're saying. So, and don't get me wrong. I, I'm not going to say there's, I, I'd be fibbing if I said there wasn't days I'm sad. I'm human. You know, there's days where it gets a little rough because I'm alone 99.9% .9 of the time, but, you know, I just push through and what keeps me going are the goals that I have and, you know, what I want to achieve in this, in this lifetime. So with goals and ambition comes sacrifice. And that's what I have to remind myself. That's such an important tool. What you just said there with goals and ambition comes sacrifice. And I, I believe that same thing. And it's like, if you want something in life, expect to have to give something up. I, I just think it's like, mm -hmm. it's like the law of balance. It's like two scales. If you want to fill the scale over here, you're going to have to empty something out of the scale over here, whether it's temporary or long-term. And I, I noticed that, and, I, and at least in my life, it's like when I get to the point where I'm struggling in any capacity, whether it's like emotionally, mentally, I feel like my plate is really full. Like right now I have a lot of stuff going on. It's like, okay, what do I have to sacrifice or let go of or say no to or put on hold temporarily in any capacity in order to mm -hmm. forge fully in this area or reach that destination or reach that goal in order to do that? And there's a period of discomfort that a lot of people don't like sitting in because who wants to mm -hmm. be angry or uncomfortable or sad or feel things that aren't anything but blissful. I think that's the cycle mm -hmm. of addiction we get caught in because we never want to feel anything mm -hmm. but euphoria. And mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you manage that? I mean, when, when you're by yourself all the time, how do you manage that space that we can get in that for some people, they call it a dark space mm -hmm. or whatever it is. How do you get yourself out of that when you feel like you're maybe going in that direction? Um, Number one, I, I'll be honest, I, I do pray a lot. You know, I, that, 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 that's what I, pr I pray. And, and I have to remind myself and be thankful for what I do have, not what I'm not feeling I have at that moment. Because in all reality, I have everything that I need, okay? I might not have everything that I want, but I truly have everything I need. And I also have my dog. You guys know I have Miles. That helps me a lot, a lot. So I have a companion to give love to. As humans, we want to receive, but for me, I'm a giver. And so when I want to give, I still receive for her. But, you know, I have my dog that I turn to. And more than anything, I just have to realize what I do have. Let's not focus on what we don't have. Focus on what we do. Because a lot of us, speaking for myself, I have everything I need. And I, I kind of, you know, kind of mix that together or put that together. When you have everything you need your wants lesson, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm able to say that because this is the least I've ever possessed materialistically, physically in my life. But it's absolutely the most fulfilled time in my life. I have food, I have water, I have somewhere to sleep, I have my dog, I have my health. Everything on my body works. I'm winning. 
So when you get in those, you know, sad moments, I would call it a pity moment, stop and think about what you do have. Because most of us have everything we need to I have my health, and I emphasize on health a lot because, you know, I've used this saying many times. We live in a society where they profit off self-doubt. They do everything to make us think that we're not good enough or we should look like this or we should be this. And if you can just learn to love yourself, you know, I'm getting older. I'm 41 now, and I've really learned to love who I am, how I look, how I do things, and I'm grateful for the ability And I go back to that because I can wake up, I can walk, I can drink water, I can use the restroom, I can strap my car. I'm able to do everything I want to do still. And that's that's a blessing. So look at the big picture sometimes, or most of the time. That's what I try to do. And, you know, I have moments where I get sad or mad, but my happiness exceeds that so by far that when I have other feelings of rather than just contentment or happy, it, 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 I catch it right away because it's so rare that I want to know why. And that's something you need to be able to, to get rid of. If it's not happy or healthy, then, then why, why deal with it or why accept it in your life? I love it. I heard a couple things from you. So one, you have to love what you have and love where you are. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm a big believer in visual, like, when is the last time you actually wrote down on a piece of paper all the things you're grateful for in your life that you have? And, and I, for the listeners I, out there, I know this might feel like, oh, yeah, that, that'll be either too long to do, too hard to do, or why do that? But I want to encourage you to do that because when you actually look at what you have and what, like you said, what you need versus what you want, you will be astounded at how much is there. We are you looking at life with a glass half empty or half full? The people with the half mm-hmm. empty are the ones always leaving bitchy comments on everyone's posts or complaining that restaurants aren't open and this and that, and that I can't get home or I, I stub my toe or whatever it is. It's, it's not just, p- people don't complain just in trucking. People complain all over the world. But can we shift our perspective to not only see what we have, but I think perspective also can allow us to put ourselves in the other person's shoes. When we have Mm -hmm. perspective, we can have empathy. And when we have empathy, we're a Mm -hmm. little bit kinder to ourselves and to the world. So I love what you're saying. And I also wrote down Mm -hmm. um, that gratitude makes you move forward. That that's kind of what Mm -hmm. I heard from you. It's like the more grateful Mm -hmm. you are and appreciative you are and kind you are like when someone holds a door open for you or the fact that you have a truck that runs and you're able to put fuel in it every day, like, and appreciating that we also tend to see other good in our lives, but we also attract other good in our lives. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met someone that was just negative and angry and what, and, and they attract positive people? And the people around them are happy and upbeat. I mean, rarely, <laughs> it, it, no. rarely do you see that. So if you want a good circle, be part of that good circle. Mm-hmm. And that's what I say. I, and it's not boastful, so don't take this wrong. No. I, I like to say that I have enough happy that I want to give it away. And you hear that in, you know, my messages and things that, you know, that I relay in my videos and stuff like, oh, I'm doing my hands. You know how animated I am. Like, get some. Like, I want people to feel good. Meaning, you know, I, I got to this point and I feel good that I want to share that. Like, I want everybody to be able to experience that, even if it's for 30 seconds or a minute. Like, I want everyone that I can to help feel that. Because once you feel that, you won't want to get away from it. So you're going to always strive to get back to that. I agree. And, and I, agree. I feel that's, that, that's my, my, my mission. And I, there's, there's not a lot of effort put into it, honestly. Like, it's not like I go out consciously like, hey, I'm going to make you feel good. No, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just there. That, that, that's my purpose, I feel, and, that, and that's my gift. Um, it makes me think about, and maybe you've seen, um, it's on Netflix, but there's also a book out. And it's, it's minimalism. It's talking about minimalism and the idea of Mm -hmm. you don't need more to make you happy. And I think truck drivers Mm -hmm. are probably some of the best people to understand that. And 
do we focus on the lack that we don't have all these things or the fact that you don't have very much tying you down like what a freeing experience we live in a world where storage units are the new like house building i mean i know people yep. that own two three four storage units now i can understand if a truck driver owns a storage unit because you may not have a home or you may need somewhere to put your stuff so i can understand that but that's the majority me. of me. the world <laughs> yeah the majority of the world has a how many thousand square foot home and still has one two three storage units and at, at some point i guess i'm on the same page you are is how much what is the point where enough is enough and where we're looking outside of ourselves for contentment and happiness and reassurance when it really is within us and talking from experience that is a scary process when we have to actually look inside of us and decide when enough is enough that's where you see weight loss stories of like hundreds of pounds where the person just finally had enough call it rock bottom i hit rock bottom where it was like i can't live this way anymore i am going to die and if I don't do something about it, me, not other people, because other people tried to fix me for years, we're never going to move the needle. And how, how do you feel, just and I'm just curious, because you are a driver, that how can we help other drivers move the needle so they don't hit that dark place, that rock bottom? Like, what are things that they can do, or maybe you've done them, that to move them out of that space? Well, for me, I think in, in trucking, one of the biggest things that I've realized and accepted is you have to, for me, I can only speak for myself because this is what works for me, is I, I truly live in the moment, okay? Where I am is where I am, and that's how I can appreciate what I'm doing. And when you come into trucking, you have to know that stuff is going to happen every day. And you have to learn to accept when you miss things. I had a trip planned. They forgot about it. I didn't get the time off. And I was okay with it. That was an interesting moment for me. I was okay with that. I couldn't go. So in trucking, you have to learn to just roll with it. If you get to go, you get to go. If you don't, you don't. That's, again, a part of the sacrifice of being in trucking. So I would tell people when you come or you're in trucking, you have to learn to just be in the moment with where you are and what you're at and, and try not to plan things because to me, you're setting yourself up for disappointment that way. I can't go on this trip. Okay. Oh, well, where am I going? And, and that helps me personally, just being in the moment where I'm at, what I'm doing. And that also helps me keep my focus for, you know, less chance of error is being in with what I'm doing. So it's not easy, but it's, that's something that I, that I think about consciously all the time. That why, how do I enjoy what I do so much? Because I'm mm -hmm. in the moment and there's nowhere else I have to be. It's almost like I'm hearing from you. It's like, why, why do I like what I do? Like, why am I doing what I do? And I hear, and I hear from a lot of people, not just trucking, like, oh, I'm doing it for the money. Well, what are you wanting no. the money to do for you? Like, we have to kind of reverse engineer and shift our whys sometimes because I have some family members where it's like, when I win the lottery, and I'm like, you've been saying that for 45 mm -hmm. years. At what point can we shift our desires towards something that you actually can achieve? towards something that you actually can attain. And it's almost like I'm going to wait for something else to change me instead of me changing me. And, and I say that because this is where my mindset was many years ago. It was like, I'm waiting for some magic pill, some elixir to come and fix me because one, I don't even know if I want to be fixed. And two, it's hard. It's scary. It's uncomfortable. But I, for me, and I'm just, maybe I'm wired a little bit different. It sounds like maybe, you know, similar with you. It's like, yes. I, I want other people so deeply to experience life as a happy thing, despite all the circumstances. And the way that we do that is recognize the things that we can change in our lives. And, and two of those are our actions and our reactions. The third one is managing our emotions. And the fourth one is, is that we can change us. Like we can, despite every obstacle, despite the media, despite mm -hmm. politics, despite, you know, the logistics of trucking, despite all of that, like, you are such a great example of someone that just keeps rising above and how do you manage how do you manage 
that space of like, you're, you're who I would call like a leader in trucking. How do you manage that space to keep leading people and keep filling your cup at the same time? Because man, girl, you are everywhere. And I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It, it, it's my passion. And I'll be honest, there's, there's not a lot of effort in what I do. I feel it's just who I am. Mm -hmm. When I make a video or I share something or talk about something, that, that's because I just felt that. There's not a lot of thought in what I share. This is who I am and what I do every day. And I, I've always loved to talk. <laughs> My whole life, I've always been a talker. Yeah, and I, I have I, that I just, problem. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just love sharing it. I, I do. And, you know, I want to go back to what we were talking about a minute ago. You know, before I came on road, you know, I was, I, I was, a, a single mom I'll just say it I don't really like to emphasize on that but I was a single mom I worked three jobs I raised my two kids you know sharing with her father but I did all that and I had all those things for my kids and I we had a house we had toys we went camping you know we did all of these things and when I took my over the road job here at ply car I got rid of every single thing I owned except my kids keepsakes trophies mm -hmm. ribbons pictures things like that I got rid of everything because I had no more connection to that stuff. So I have an eight by 10 storage in Arizona where that's what I have in there. I don't, I don't own anything else. And, and it's so freeing when you go back to saying, you know, what do you love about trucking? The freedom. There, there's even this morning, I, sometimes I sleep so good that I wake up and I have to think, where am I again? Well, hold on. Where did I park? You know what I mean? I get so wrapped up in what I'm doing and stuff that, I, I forget where I am sometimes. Oh, snack, I'm in Florida today. Okay, let's roll. I'm headed to Orlando. And, and that's part of the journey, the adventure, the freedom. Not a lot of people can, you know, can, can say that or do that. Heck, most people but have never, like, traveled outside their county. <laughs> I mean, I know people <laughs> I in my know. town that have never left, like, Hartford <laughs> or never left Washington <laughs> County or never left the state. Mm -hmm. It's like girl, like, dude, you got to experience life. And There's I so want to ask the people listening, whether you're a driver or not, type in the comment section, what is one thing you love about trucking? Like, what is one thing that's just like, oh, and I want you to think about that for a second, because maybe that was the reason why you stepped into trucking in the first place and you've forgotten about it. So I want you to like, take a moment, kind of take a deep breath. Why do you love being a truck driver? Drop it in the comment section. I'm so serious. I want to know because it's so easy to focus on the bad and on what's not going right and e-logs and, you know, different stuff that your employer says or truck stops or, or not good food or whatever it is like so easy to focus on all that other stuff. Why do you love trucking? I want to know. I'm dead serious. Drop it in the comment section. I want to know why do you love trucking? And I want you to know that you typing that might inspire somebody else to remember why they love it too. You know, uh, some people know, you know, my backstory or not, but, but I'm a third generation truck driver and, and I just feel it was inevitable, you know what I mean? To, to come. And I grew up in trucks, you know, with my mom, both my parents drove my grandma, my grandpa, my dad's dad drove and, you know, I was a later in life truck driver. And when I started in logistics, you know, I was a courier at FedEx for 10 years. And then I drove limos, buses, charter buses. Party okay, buses, wait, time out, time out. You were okay, a limo okay. driver? You got to stop for yes, a Yes, I was. You yes. were a limo. <laughs> you were yes. a limo driver ever. Oh, my gosh. I can do some bitching too. I can just envision you hitting that window that goes down and be like, how you doing? How's it going? <laughs> and that Sorry. was a lot I just of fun. I, <laughs> how you doing? I'd show up in my penguin suit and, you know, I'm before I know it, you know, my jacket, my, my jacket was off and I, I can't even tell you the number of times that I would drive people and I would end up going, doing things that I was taking them to do, okay? I, it, it is so funny to me because, uh, for example, I took some people Christmas time up to a train ride in Arizona, um, Grand Canyon or something like that. And they invited me. They're like, do you wanna come with us? 
okay. So I put my different shirt on and go on. I go do the stuff with these people that I took them to do. It was amazing. So the limos and the party buses, it was, you know, an, a, an extra job for me that I love. So I felt like I was getting paid to, to have fun. So it never felt like working because I would engage with people and, you know, go do fun stuff. And I drove party buses probably the longest. And so I would deal with crazy drugs. I'm sorry. This is like so great. I can just so <laughs> visualize you driving a party bus. And people would be confused if you were a part of the party or you're actually yeah. the driver. This is what makes it so great. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I did not know this yeah. about you. This is fantastic. Yes. <laughs> For what? Up until I came to Ply Car in 2018, I, I drove buses. I would drive trucks in the day and then at night or on the weekends, I would drive buses. Wow. And um, one, t one time, I think the longest run I did was like three days. I went, uh, took some people to the Grand Canyon and wow. drove them around and, you know, did all that stuff. So again, you know, that, and that's where, again, I feel my relation to people. People know me, you know, lady trucking. And when it's necessary or I feel it's, it's you know, needed to relate to people i'll share more things about me because sometimes people can misjudge by what they see mm -hmm. right now and it's mm -hmm. like wait a minute hold on <laughs> i've been there or done what you're doing but i wait for those moments so it's you know on a personal level and and i think you know that helps people sometimes too like oh okay she's not just only just happy lady trucking right here no it, it, i've worked for that i've worked to get where i am and, you know, even, you know, with my children, I, I love it because that's my direct reflection of who I am and what I do. And my children witness that and, and they both have the confidence, the drive, and the, the no fear. And that's why I call them my two biggest accomplishments. That I never have to speak on because they're just doing. Like today I shared a picture of my daughter going to deliver babies. You know, she's on her way. She's in her last year of nursing school. And she's, you know, that's one of her, her, the lessons right now is labor and delivery. Do you know how proud I am of that? My daughter in her nursing suit with her mask and her hat on, like going to deliver babies. There's nothing more pivotal than that for me. And that probably goes mm -hmm. to show that how much your daughter likes, uh, you know, really kind of this idea of life and excitement and uh, being, and there's mm -hmm. nothing better than being in the moment. If you've never had a kid, it is unlike anything else, but to actually mm -hmm. deliver somebody else's baby and deliver that miracle. Yeah. How cool is that? And then, you know, when my son, my son's in the Air Force Academy, he's in his second year up in Colorado Springs. And when my son calls and tells me, mom, I flew the glider by myself today. What, babe? Yes. Nine out of 270 people in his class had, the, you know, went through the training and he glided down from like 10,000 feet on his own. Wow. You know how amazing that is? Wow. So, um, you know, and I'll be honest, you know, with the kids growing up, you know, I'd sharing, you know, par what is it, co-parenting, and that was kind of yeah. rough sometimes. And now when, you know, oh, here's an example. As much as I invest into what I do now, this is the best analogy, is what I invested into my children. Mm. That was where all my energy went, okay? And there was nothing more important. That, that's where my sacrifice came at that point. Again, to raise the kids, I had to sacrifice other things by choice, which you should, to get to that point with them. And that worked. Well, now I'm trying to, trying, I'm getting to where I want to be with my brand and, you know, with my passion for trucking. There's more sacrifice. So, you know, what we just said is with goals and, you know, where you want to be, come sacrifice. So I put, you know, a lot of the things I wanted to do on, on, on hold or, you know, things as in getting out with the kids to invest into that. Now that's concluded. Now I'm sacrificing, kind of re reverse, sacrificing some of the time with them to get where I want to go. I love it. What I'm hearing from you is a couple of things. So it's like, one, I want to go back to what you said in the very beginning. And when you're talking about, okay. you know, what people see is not always what's really going on. And there's like a misjudgment. Mm -hmm. And um, part of what I try to show people is that, you know, when we take more inventory in ourselves, when we stop, when we breathe, I'm running a five-day mindfulness challenge for truck drivers. There's a reason people want doing mm -hmm. that. 
is because I want you to get yourself to just stop and take inventory, take a breath, and then look up at the world differently. Most of the time, we're looking at people through the eyes of the way we look at ourselves. And so when we stop being so hard on ourselves and judging ourselves and criticizing mm-hmm. ourselves and pointing out all the things we do wrong, we also then shift our perspective on other people the same way. We start to see the good things in them. We start to see how they're helping. We start mm-hmm. to see how they're happy. We start to see, you know, yeah, I know you said you're having a hard day, but you're doing so good at this. That's those people like you in the world where it's just like they see past all of that. And so we have to be willing to find the light switch in the room that we're in, even if we have to search mm-hmm. for it for a while. So that's the first thing I heard from you. And then the second thing I heard from you was that it's a season of life. And I tell myself this all the time. is like, this is mm-hmm. the season of life that I'm in. Whether it's Mm -hmm. with my kids, whether it's with my spouse, we just celebrated 14 years married, whether it's in my business, I try to remind myself that just like the seasons in life, winter, spring, summer, fall, that season will Mm -hmm. come to pass. It eventually Mm -hmm. will come to pass. You have to believe that. But are you willing to ride out that season and do everything in your power? Because there's a difference between just sitting and being like, well, I'm just going to wait for my life to change because it sucks right now. Or mm-hmm. I'm going to wait for, you know, that business or that truck stop or that other person or that family member to change because I'm not going to change. And this is a crappy season. Or we can take the initiative to do that, which is hard. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, change is never comfortable. To grow, this is a saying I have. You have to go to grow. And you have to be able to recognize when you're not growing anymore with what you're doing. And some people are, that works for them and that's okay. Like, you know, I mean, I, and please, you know, I don't believe, you know, Hope and I are trying to come at, you know, or whatever. If you choose, some people are comfortable and that's their bubble and doing the same thing every day. And that's okay. But if you're not, and for people who are questioning that, that, that that's who I want to feel like we're directing. Because there's some of us who question it and some of us that are just okay with it. So if you're thinking, what else can I do? Go do it. Go do it. We get one life, okay? And I encourage everybody to do, you know, whatever they want to do without malice. That's something I emphasize on a lot, you know, meaning, you know, not step on people, but sometimes you have to step around people to get to where you want to go. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. And, when and you do be it with willing to accept heart. And when you do mm-hmm. it with kindness, I always feel like intention mm-hmm. is is a big factor in that. I, I wrote a post about that a few days ago where it's like some people might look at me and misjudge me or, you know, I was always worried that people would take what I'm doing the wrong way or, oh, I never wanted them to think mm-hmm. that like I was thinking I'm better than them because I have big goals and aspirations or I'm using them yeah. no. because I was always paranoid because people in my life were that way. And so my brain mm-hmm. assumed that everyone was that way. So I had to really re- rewire myself and keep doing the things that I knew were right, despite how I felt about them. Like, I felt like, ooh, maybe people are going to judge me if I do this. Well, no hope. You have to do this if you want to get where you want to go. So I want to go back to the goals thing you were talking about. If you don't mind sharing, like, okay. what are some of your goals? Like, what what are you trying to reach towards, Jacinda, in your life in any capacity? Well, when I first started branding myself, obviously, I've made, you know, Lady Truckin' a brand. And, you know, they're constantly changing, I'll tell you that. And, and I think that's a good, healthy thing because you start out, I started out with wanting a trucking company and, you know, all the, I could go on and on. And I had to actually, you know, kind of minimize that. And before I wanted to gain or obtain all these things through my lady trucking. Mm. And now that the purpose has presented itself. Trucking has given me an opportunity to, to share my gift. And I do feel that connecting with people. So through the brand, you know, I have my apparel line, I have my blogs, I have my videos. And I honestly, I do plan on, you know, having my own truck and things like that. But right now I'm not very clear of what it is, what the end goal is going to be, because the opportunities keep presenting themselves that come from different things about me. But I think trucking, no matter what happens or where I go, because being out here in the road in the truck has given me this opportunity. 
So no matter where it ends up, it's going to be involved in trucking. But I'm not sure yet. I'll be honest. Yeah. It changes all the time. Right when I think I'm going this way with it, something else comes up that was attracted by a certain maybe accolade or quality of me. So I can't really say anymore. I'm just taking it as it comes, and I feel that, you know, God will put me where I need to be. I'm really not sure at this moment. I love that. There's a, um, there's a term that uh, I use a lot, and, and some of the people I use it's called a BHAG. What's your BHAG? Big, hairy, audacious goal. And when we have that big, hairy, audacious goal, if we work backwards, there are like mini markers or mini goals along the way. And they kind of keep getting us towards that destination. And I can 100% relate with you that that BHAG, it's like, I know I wanted to help people. Like 20 years ago, I just knew I wanted to help inspire people. I didn't know what that would look like. Then I found yoga. And it was like, I was doing that, but I knew that yoga wasn't my end game, but I didn't know where I belonged. It was like, okay, I I'm doing things, but it's not really where I am, but I'm going to keep doing it. That's the key. I'm going to keep going until I see another sign until I see mm -hmm. another marker on the road that says turn left here. And that feels right. I'm just going to keep going straight. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep going. Can I tell and you so something else he, about me that you didn't know yeah. talking about? I was an aerobics instructor for four years. Okay. Okay, hold on. Hey, this and just keeps probably, getting better and better. <laughs> I want it because every time you say yoga, I've never shared that with you. But from 2000 until 2004, I taught aerobics. And again, with people, right? Talking, dancing. I taught uh, step, floor, payo, um, like, what is it? Floor, uh, bosu, Johnny G. Spin. And, you know, that was the time when my kids were young again. So mm -hmm. I would teach aerobics and I had two or three classes a day, <clears throat> back to back. I would go from one gym to the other, to the other, teaching all these different classes. Now and you're talking my life I, before. I loved, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I was that person. I would teach aerobics during the week because I could keep my children with me. I take them to the daycare downstairs, right? I teach aerobics, pick them up and we'd go home. And then at that time I bartended on the weekends. So when I would come back on Mondays, my, my classes would love to hear my stories because I, I think my first class was like a step class on Monday and I just, I could do my count so do that, but I would tell my weekend bar stories to my step classes while teaching them, you know what I mean? Basic right. And then there was this one lady who ordered over the top around the world, me repeater, you know what I mean? I could just do it all at the same time. It, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. And what led me back to even saying that is every time you say yoga, I'm like, that's funny. I taught the payo, which was a basic, yep. nothing, you know, as deep as what you do. But, um, you know, the, the payo at the, the local YMCA. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So we all have tools in our toolbox and we all have markers on the road that we're driving down that kind of get us to where we're supposed to go. So if you're watching this and you're listening today and you're like, what are you guys talking about? We're talking about a little bit of everything about perspective on life, about positivity, about mm -hmm. setting goals and, and what it means to be grateful for where you are right now, because whatever season of life that you're in right now, just trust that it's mm -hmm. the season of life you're supposed to be in. But the great thing is, is you choose every single morning when you wake up, how to respond how to act and react, mm -hmm. how to present yourself to the world. That is a hundred percent your choice. I always tell my kids like they're, I have, I'm very fortunate. I have good kids, but it's like, do you want to wake up and, and be smelly and be sticky and your hair is all greasy and gross? Or do you want to present yourself to life? Like you're ready for life and that you, you love yourself and that you, you want to be your best person. And they're like, I'll go take a shower. <laughs> and so it's like, are you showing up for life the way life should be rewarding you? Are you showing up for life the way that you then as a result are going to attract, are going to step into, or people are going to approach you and be like, I want to know that person. I want that person to be a part of life. Or are you showing up like you just don't care? Like we have to get out of this mindset in world. And, and, I, and I look at that like, I don't have to care about who I am, the way I am. And I, and I don't mean this the wrong way. Like, like mm -hmm. I don't care what I look like or the way I dress. I'm not saying that you should be, you know, all vain. I'm so I'm saying, but care about mm -hmm. yourself 
care about mm -hmm. yourself enough to show up for life so that life can reward you with all the amazing things that you desire and that are waiting for you. Something else that I really feel is important and I, I speak on this a lot, is in order to be happy with yourself, I always emphasize on living in your truth, mm. okay? And that means being true to yourself, doing what you want to do without malice. You know, I never, without malice. But that's how you find true happiness. And I, I talk about that a lot. Are you being and doing who you want to be? And as adults, we have that choice mm -hmm. to be where we want to be, be who we want to be with. And when you live in the truth, again, and that comes back to integrity. That's something I talk about a lot. Doing what's right, even when no one is watching. When I dry my hands off, and this is very minute, but it's truth. I drop my paper towel. Oh, let me pick that up. There's things sometimes I grab it. I could throw it out the window, and I don't. It's the little things that mm -hmm. build up to the big things. Agree. And Agreed. I can't emphasize that enough. And when you're a grown up or an adult, we can do what we want to do. And if you're lying about it, you probably shouldn't be doing it. That, that's truth. That, here's one. That's truth in lying. Mm. If you're doing something you shouldn't be, then why? And people will, people will respect the truth whether it's hurtful or not, in the long run. Because being truthful gains respect. And that saying truth hurts, it's real. So be true to yourself and find you're happy. And sometimes people's feelings will get hurt, but the truth is respect. I 100% agree. I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. So Jacinda, if you could tell anybody listening today one thing to motivate them to be their best self today, to get up, if they're at home, to get up off the couch and do something or to get outside and walk around their truck or to, you know, take inventory in themselves, deep breathe, whatever it is, like what, what would you want to tell them to inspire them to do those things? To wake up and love who you are. Love who you are and what you have and what you're working with. Absolutely. I look in the mirror and I have to tell myself, like, I love you. Because how easy is it to tell someone, I love you? Well, do you love yourself? Mm. Embrace that. And, and I'm getting, in, I'm not old, but I'm getting older, okay? And things change and, you know, my body changes. My mind is still kind of the same, you know, besides maybe, I don't know if I can say I'm mature, but, you know, as I wisen, as I get older. But I, I have to love who I am. And that's what I encourage everyone is love who you are. I love it. I love it. Jacinda, thank you so much. If you guys are not following her on social media, Jacinda Lady Trucking, she's just everywhere. Like just, just type in J and she will come up no matter where you are. So definitely follow her, check her out. She is a ball of inspiration and she is doing amazing things in the trucking world. So please check her out. A huge thanks to... Uh, Davy Crockett, TA Petro. So if you're in Greenville, Tennessee, anytime soon, please go and check them out. Go say hi to them. Make sure that you pick up a tube of our Stiff Mother Trucker Pain Relief Cream. We appreciate that in advance. You can also check us out at stiffmothertrucker.com so that all of your pain needs can be eliminated while you're driving on the road. And a huge shout out to Bud and Tony's Truck Parts. And so you can hop over to budandtoniestruckparts.com. They are Mother Trucker Yoga sponsor, and we appreciate them and all that they do. They allow me the ability to do all sorts of different things to support and all help all of you while out on the road feel better wherever you are. If you know of somebody, if you know of somebody that would love to take part and support the movement towards the trucker health and wellness, please reach out to us. If you would like to be a sponsor for Chrome and Steel Radio, please reach out to us. But more importantly, share out this broadcast. Share out this broadcast with someone important in your life that you feel may need just a little bit of inspiration, a little dose of hope today. A huge thanks to Jacinda Lady Trucking. Um, I believe I went back and tagged her in this live this 
video. I was going to say live video and show all at the same time. Um, so definitely go and check her out. But most importantly, take care of yourself because there's only one you and a replacement is just not possible. Goodbye, my friends.